In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create errors and lines and work with them in power charts. As you can see, I've already prepared a stacked column chart right here. And by clicking on my chart, the action bar appears right above it. In the lines menu, I can find all the different errors and lines that I can possibly insert into my chart. In the lines menu, value access breaks and category breaks can also be found, but I've created another video where I cover this topic. Moreover, there's the possibility to choose if connector lines should be shown in my chart and if grid lines should be shown. But I'm going to switch these options off once again and start with creating a growth arrow. A growth arrow displays the growth between two data points. And there are three ways of how I can possibly insert a growth arrow into my chart. First of all, I have to click right here and a little settings window pops up. The first option, how I can create a growth arrow, is by simply clicking on my start point in my chart and my end point right here. And this is how quick I can create a growth arrow. If I click on my chart once again, the settings window and the corresponding overlay menu of this arrow disappear and I can create another growth arrow. Now I'm going to show you the second option of how you can create a growth arrow. I'm simply clicking on my start point using the drag and drop function and choosing my endpoint. The third option is that I simply go to the settings window, click on this little pen and select my start and end point right here. For example, I go for 2021 as a start point and 2022 as, a, as an end point. And now you can see two things. First of all, I've inserted another growth arrow. And because these two growth arrows are overarching, and overarching growth arrows are automatically fused into one. If you don't want this to happen, you can simply change the height of your arrow like that. And now they're separated once again. If you want them to be fused once again, you simply put it up like that. And if you want to change the height of those two fused arrows, you simply click right here and change the height like that. Now let's have a closer look on the settings window. Right here you can choose which kind of label type you want to use for your growth arrow. Right now I've selected an absolute value, but I could also go with percentages or a combination of both. And moreover, I can choose a custom label or create a custom label right here. Then another window pops up where I can create my custom arrow label. Right here you have a little preview of how your label is going to look like. And as you can see, I've now only added an absolute value. But by clicking on this add, I can choose, for example, free text and, for example, percent. By clicking on these little arrows, I can change the position of my label element. Right here, I can choose in which way my label elements should be separated. So I could use, for example, space or a new line. For free text, I could, for example, choose a dollar sign. Maybe I want to go with a new line right here. And as you can see, my percentage value grows up into the next line. Um, I can choose how many decimal places my percentage value should display, for example, two. And if there, for example, should be brackets around it or not. Right here, I can choose the reference value or the reference data point of my percentage value. But there's another video where I explain to you how this works. By clicking on OK, I'm inserting my custom label. And as you can see, this is what it now looks like. Right here, I can also choose the decimal places of my percentage value. If I'm going for percentage value right here, I could also change the decimal places, as you can see. I can choose if I want to display an ellipse around my data label. I could also reverse the arrow direction. And as you can see, the values are automatically changed. If I've changed the position of my arrow, I can reset the position. So it goes back to the original position. And now we're going to have a look on the little overlay menu that pops up. I have the possibility to format my label and my arrow. 
So I can change the font size, the font color, if it should be, for example, bold. I can choose if my label should be filled, for example, in yellow. And I can also change the color of my arrow. And by clicking on the little X, my whole arrow is deleted, which I'm going to do right now, because now we're going to insert another arrow. The second kind of arrow we can create is the compound annual growth rate arrow. A compound annual growth rate arrow displays the annual average growth rate of the time period between two data points. And I have the same three options to create a compound annual growth rate arrow, which are completely similar to the options that I have for creating a normal growth rate arrow. So just I can simply click on the start point and the end point, as we've already seen before. I could also use the drag and drop function or select my start and end point in the settings window. And now I see the average annual growth rate between these two data points. And in the settings window, I have quite similar options as we've already seen in the growth arrow settings window. I can change the label type, create a custom label, choose the decimal places, define if an ellipse should be displayed around my data label, reverse the arrow direction, reset the position if I've changed the height, for example. And I can also choose if connected lines should be shown. And this overlay menu is also completely similar to my growth arrow overlay menu. So now I can delete the compound annual growth arrow once again to show you how you can create a delta line. Just click right here and another settings window pops up. And the delta line is a possibility to show you the percentage or absolute difference between two data points. And you have, as you can possibly imagine, the same three options to create a delta line. And you can choose which data points you want to use for your delta line. If you click on this button right here, you use the column sum of series one and two, which would be 300 right here. If you click on this button right here, you're using the data point of series two, which would be 200. And if you click on this button right here, you use the data point of series one, which would be 100. So if I want, for example, to use the column sums of 2018 and 2019, I'm using my drag and drop function. And as you can see, a data line is created and in my settings window, I could also change the label type once again, select if there should be an ellipse displayed around my label, reverse the arrow direction and reset the position if I changed the position of my data line, because I can change it and put it anywhere I want. For example, also right here, right in the middle of my chart. So if I've changed my position, I can reset it right back and I can also change the position to the axis side. In my overlay menu, I have the same options we've already seen. And I have also the possibility to show if there should be an automatic connector line. In order to show you how this works, I'm going to change the position of my label manually. So I'm just going to switch my position right back here so I can show it to you better. I can simply click on my, on my arrow, on my data level, and freely drag my label and if I click on control I can put it anywhere I want anywhere for example also here and as you can see my automatic connector line is a little line that connects my label to the delta line and if I switch that option off it's just the data label floating around freely Okay, so let's delete this delta line and move on to a value line. This feature displays a horizontal value line in your chart. And I've just clicked on my lines menu on value line. And, and now you can see that there's an automatic value line already created, which uses the average value of all my data points. So I could use the average value, but I could also untick that little box and type in another value that I want to use. For example, 375. Right here, I can define the name of my value line. If it shouldn't be value, I could also, for example, use 
target. And you can choose if an ellipse should be shown around your label, if it should be displayed on the axis side or not. And I can reset the position if I, for example, changed the position of my label like that. And the overlay menu is also very similar to the ones that we've already seen in this video. I hope this video helped you to understand how easy it is to create arrows and lines within Power Charts and work with them and adjust them. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.